Now we're going to move on to uh, Kaiser Chiefs cash ban, which has now been upheld. Uh, I always try to find a silver lining in every cloud. And while we're talking about the under 23s, Kaiser Chiefs ban might mean that players like Kunjabulo and Blom, Happy Mashiyani, Angobo, these guys get more game time at Chiefs, which could be good for our Olympic team because we're going to take a few young players with some experience, maybe. Um, but from Chiefs' point of yeah. view, how difficult is this season going to be? It's going to be tough. You know, you've got to feel for Gavin Hunt. But I think when he went to the team, he knew already the dynamics, he knew the problems that the teams were facing. Hence, if you listen to him in all his interviews, pre-match and post-match, he's been making it clear the fact that he knew coming in here that he might not be able to get the, the ban over, over 10 and that he might have to stay with this. And hence, you saw him in the second half against Sundowns. He gave you a glimpse of what he might look like going forward. You know, with uh, the Sefama, 17-year-old Sefama coming in, Alessato coming into the field of play. You saw him introduce Blom there as a super sub. He brought in also Ngobo playing the whole 90 minutes in that game. So you can see more or less where he's thinking. He's thinking more or less to say, we have these players that have come from a youth ranks that never got a chance to play because the coaches previously always believed in using the tried and tested players. We have a challenge now. Norkobi is not available. He's been a key player for us, you know. Um, we have those challenges already. We can't sign new players. You want to send into the squad. You can't sign him because the ban is still there. Munari eventually had to leave and go to Paris because they couldn't sign him. Olam Lambo was one touted. He couldn't realize not going to be able to get a deal there. Hence, he had to sign with Amazulu. You know, so if you look at Sassman playing in left-back position, uh, Frostler playing in the right-back position, uh, Ramathun Patelo converted to play in a central, a central uh, defense position for Kaza Chiefs, and then you see the Katande coming in and join the middle of a park. So all these things, I believe, is a blessing in disguise because you can never have a team of Chiefs caliber unable to promote a lot of young stars. You know, they are forced to do so now. They are forced to bring those players into the fold. It's going to be a long season because they might not get the results they want. They want they, 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 you know, the trophy drought is there for all to see. They want to get trophies, but they have to try and get those trophies with a young team. And... If that, be, if that is the case, they must just need to support these young players and make them be able to want to get them what they need. We're both old enough to remember when it actually wasn't uncommon to see a young guy come through at Kaiser Chiefs and having teenagers on the field, especially in the 80s and that. Um, do you think it could also, that that could be a big thing? You know, if you were promoted at a, at a big club, a, a Pirates, a Sundowns, a Chiefs, it, it's, it's a big thing for a young player. That jersey, I mean, is very heavy. But if you shine in it, that's a big opportunity. I mean, if you saw over the weekend, uh, Sifama had a one-on-one -on -one chance we could have scored a goal, you know? He can only get those opportunities. He can only get those chances now. is the time for him to really show exactly what he can do as a player. I've watched these players play at under-20 level, under-17 level, or travel with the, with the junior teams. And I know what they can bring into the team, you know? Um, I thought they, I, I, I thought they were going to get Tibeti back from Swallows into the team. And the fact that they left him there, I think maybe they've got a different plan. Uh, they had a left Chopani there. Because a lot of players whom they've had to release because they couldn't fill them into the team, couldn't have them playing in a team. I think it's a good time. If you remember the 2001 team of Moshina Chibra, they wanted to win everything in the country, including uh, the, the Chef Confederations Cup. That was a young team. You had your Jabulani Masangu, Jabupule then, your Mbutus were all very young teams. So they did well. Kune was fairly a new player into the squad. So if you look at those and remember that, this is, it shows that if you have a coach that believes in youngsters, I escaped on approving it over and over again. You know, that you can play with the youngsters if they have the right structure. Uh, Arthur Zwani has been part of the youth team for a long time, so he knows these players. So he's sitting on a bench with Gavin Hunt. So at least there'll be a, usual, there, a lot of insight coming from Arthur Zwani to say, this is where we can slot this player. This is where his best uh, position when he plays at this position, you know. Uh, Dylan Shepard, he has worked with the youth team at Vest. So he understands how to deal with youth players. So I believe that, you know what, as much as everybody can, uh, can say now, Chiefs are losing out, they won't be able to sign players, there might be problems going forward. I believe it's a blessing in disguise. We've always complained about the so-called big team not producing enough youngsters in their teams. Now we can actually have youngsters, real youngsters, not a 30-year-old youngster, but a proper youngster in a team. And, and how important is the psychological thing going to be? Because let's, let's be frank, they led the, 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 the squad that Gavin Hunt has inherited, led the league for over a year. 
they were on the verge of doing it. If you can, you know, they can do it again, surely. You know, you know, this is where you talk about experienced players coming to the fore. Um, I, I still remember the game between Murray's Bay United and Kaza Chiefs, the 1-0 down. That's when you saw what a Paka can do on a day if he's given a chance. A Kama Billiard came to the fore, played two assists on the goals that were scored. Yes, in a game against Sundowns, they could have scored early goals easily. They had chances to find the back of the net, couldn't convert their chances. You know, the only thing that you need is to gain, gain confidence. Once these players are confident enough and they realize that, you know, it is us and there's nobody else, and they understand what the badge means, the badge they're wearing, what it means, and understand what it means to be part of this team, they will know and you'll see exactly what you're able to deliver. They'll be able to come out and show that they're not just there just to make up numbers, but they can be able to win things. Imagine this team that you're talking about, the one that played in the second half against Sundowns. Imagine the team playing in a derby, the young player, 17-year-old, 20-year-old, 21-year-old, all playing in a derby against the London Pirates and maybe winning and going all the way to the MTN8. That should be a huge story to say, finally, something we invested our money in is paying dividend. My final question for you. Uh, you've mentioned Dylan Shepard. You've mentioned Arthur Zwani. You've obviously mentioned Gavin Hunt. But uh, David Mulner, Jared Marsh, these are the, the fitness guys at Kaiser Chiefs. How important are their roles going to be this season, knowing that any serious injuries could be uh, detrimental? Listen, I mean, Sundowns has proven it. Uh, Sundowns, even though they had a big squad, had a lot of players on loan, it was all about the fitness and the people that are supposed to look at regeneration of players. And they needed to make sure the players remain sharp, they remain strong, they remain focused. Those are the players, these are the people we never talk about. We always talk about coaches and how the players are doing well. But Peter brought that to the fore to say, I am, I'm just a coach, but I have a huge team behind me. The fitness guy makes sure these guys are looked after. And I think now they're going to earn their money. They need to be able to get these players up to scratch at a level where they understand that they're not only paying at MDC level, they're playing at a professional, fully fleshed professional level, that lifestyle issues has to come into play. How they train must come into play. Their own program must come into play. So it's a huge, a huge ask, but it can be done. And given the sort of team or big team achieves is, I believe that can be done. Well, we're going to start seeing it from in a few minutes. Uh, Chiefs up against Chipper. Uh, I don't like asking predictions, uh, but uh, our producer has just told me that I should ask you. Any predictions for this evening? Chipper is a hoodoo team for Chiefs. I know that for a fact. You know, I know that every time they play Chipper, it's always a tricky affair. And um, the fact that there are no fans. I believe people have been talking and saying that whenever teams like Pirates and Chiefs are playing without fans, uh, there's a huge advantage for them. I believe that it works differently. In the Eastern Cape, Chiefs have used numbers. When they play there, they always excel. So to play in front of a, uh, an empty stadium in Eastern Cape might be a problem for Kaiser Chiefs. And I believe that also the fact that these young players might have stage fright. Maybe, on, if you look at it in the other way, the flip side, you might say, maybe these players who are fairly young who are not used to this climate, might be happier playing without fans in the stadium. There won't be anybody booing them. When we want to say uh, every time they, they don't do well, who's going to jeer them and everything, all of that sort. So I believe that might be a draw today. I'm going to go with a draw for this encounter. I don't see either of the team winnings. I mean, I believe Colonel Siam has got a very formidable team. Uh, a draw will be the result that I believe will be fair enough for the two teams today. Uh, because Chiefs will be playing this game with one eye, looking at the W on the weekend also. But then, a given on team, anything is possible with given on team. You know, he, he can inspire a team to do so well in a game. So, let's see what happens. Because on Saturday, it was proven that even he couldn't actually change the team to play in a better way. So, let's see what happens with a Kenneth Longo a man that you know can defend with his life. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Uh, Brian, it's always fun to chat with you. Miss you, man. Cheers, man. Cool.